from the end of May 2018 to the beginning of January 2020, I was not formally employed. And so I know <laughs> what it's like to have an employment gap. Before I even jump into anything I want to say in this video, I just want to say that if you are in a season of your life where you are going through an employment gap, I just want you to feel seen. I want you to know that you are not alone. And yes, you can get through this. You can get over this hump. So now let's talk about some tools that you can use to overcome, deal with, explain an employment gap on your resume. First of all, let's talk about what an employment gap is in case maybe you're watching this and you've watched up until this point and you're not familiar with the term. All an employment gap is, is a period of unemployment on your resume. And according to indeed.com, usually if this period is more than six months, it begins to raise red flags with employers. And, you know, I understand it from an employer standpoint why they may have issues with somebody that has an employment gap of more than six months. But life has taught me that sometimes people have employment gaps for various reasons. It could be that their job just abruptly ended and they were just laid off, as we've been seeing a lot of that news within the United States recently, right? It could be that they were unfairly terminated. That happened. It could be that they needed to drop the work because because there was somebody in their family, a child, a family member, a parent that needed caregiving. And so the person had to put work on hold to take care of that family member. Job gaps can happen for various reasons. And I don't know why you maybe have a job gap, but I want you to know that, yeah, it's, it, it's unfair that sometimes that's seen as a problem. But anyway, let's talk about these tools. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is to get busy during your employment gap. Now I understand, don't, 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 don't throw so your stones at me, hold on. Okay, I understand that depending on the cause of your job gap or employment gap, you may in fact be very, very busy. For instance, if you are taking care of a child or a family member, a loved one, right, you are most likely really, really busy during your day because of that caregiver role that you have taken on. What I'm saying here about getting busy has to do with getting busy with potential relevant skills for your career path. So let's say that you have been in an industry for a while and then something happened and now you have an employment gap. Could you maybe volunteer at you know a local school or some other place within your community to keep those skills sharp right could you could you do that could you also uh, maybe start freelancing right the reason i bring up freelancing is because during my gap which was pretty significant i was a freelance writer and so essentially i was pitching myself to healthcare and health technology companies within my area and actually i had a few clients that were not within in my area but anybody that would take me i pitched myself to them and i was writing content for them i was writing blog content social media content email marketing content for these healthcare and health technology businesses so this kept me quite busy so i was i was, I was also caregiving at the time because i have a child and he was about four or five at the time so i was taking care of him i'd go drop him off at school i'd come back i'd work on my freelance writing articles anything i had to do um and then when it was time to go pick him up I would pick him up and then continue with caregiving when school was over. And so I kept myself busy this way. I also had a YouTube channel at the time. And so another YouTube channel, not this one. And so that also filled up my days. I would plan videos, I would shoot videos. I, I made myself busy. So during this time, I know you probably have a plethora of <laughs> responsibilities, but I want you to get creative and think of activities that could keep you busy and hone those skills, right? So during that time, that employment gap that I had, those freelance writing skills, those content creation skills came in super handy when I wanted to get into medical writing and medical communications. And actually during my interview for my very first um, science writer job, 
they told me that they were really impressed with the work that I had done for my freelance writing clients and the videos that I was creating. They were really excited about that and that really helped with paving the way for that career path. So if you can do something, it doesn't have to be anything significant like I just described, but something to keep your skills alive during that time, something that you can potentially showcase on your resume even, go ahead and do that. Now, if you had to leave a job because of maybe the toxic nature or you know you just didn't like the treatments you were getting at that job and so you quit the job and that has led to your employment gap be unapologetic about the situation i know that sometimes communicating these things can even be traumatic for certain people right i completely understand that and empathize with that and i do not minimize that right but i think it's really important for you to control the narrative when you get into a situation where there is an interview and an interview is asking you why do you have this employment gap and maybe it was because for instance i talked about caregiving i talked about I, i've talked a little bit about you had to quit because of the situation at the place right be very very open about communicating exactly what happened i don't recommend lying at interviews i don't i don't recommend covering up facts if something legitimately it's one thing if you did something wrong like sometimes these things happen you made a mistake and maybe you got fired that's different but if this is something whereby this had to happen right or you were truly laid off Control the narrative, be open about it and say, this is what happened. I've been applying for jobs. It's been very difficult, but also during this time, I've been caregiving. Also during this time, I've been doing that. Also during this time, right? And so communicate that, control that narrative. Don't let people bully you into making you feel intimidated about, number one, the reason why you may have a gap and then the gap itself, right? It could be a plethora of reasons. So control that narrative, be open and honest about communicating exactly why that job, that last job ended and what has contributed to the gap. You know, I remember when I went through the gap, the very first six months, I had an interview, my first interview after six months. And I communicated that. I remember one of the last questions the hiring manager asked me was, what do you have that other people do not have that would convince me to hire you over everyone else. And I was very, very open, even though I had lost my postdoc because funding cuts had ended and I, had, I mentioned that during the interview. I also said, the reason why you should give me this job is because I have a child and he has some special needs and I'll do anything for him. And that's the kind of determination I bring to this job, you know, and you know, I, that makes me emotional sometimes, but yes, control that narrative. You all know how much I believe in the power of building a personal brand. So currently, if you are going through an employment gap, this may be a really great time for you to start building a personal brand, right? I talk a lot about personal branding on my LinkedIn and I actually do have a course on using LinkedIn to build a personal brand. If it's, you know, you can check it out and if it makes sense for you, you can go ahead and get that. I do go into depth talking about how to start and continue to build a personal brand on LinkedIn. It's a great way for you to showcase what it is that you're doing during the time when you are not formally employed, right? When I wasn't formally employed and I was freelancing, I still showed up on LinkedIn. I shared my work that I was doing for my freelance writing clients. I shared the tools I found useful in, for, for instance, doing search engine optimization for my clients. I, I talked about maybe some ups and downs I was going through. If I go back into maybe 2019, 2020, Gertrude's LinkedIn, you'll find me talking about a lot of those things. I also kept a blog at the time. I know I was super busy. I kept a blog at the time and sometimes I would write and then share that on my LinkedIn, right? And so the point I'm trying to make here is 
you can begin to build a personal brand on a platform and i'm talking about linkedin specifically because linkedin is the is the professional platform right it's the professional social platform and so if you're showcasing this on that platform it is likely that when eventually you are ready to start applying for jobs or you're applying for jobs and then people start to look you up that this shows up as, oh, this person, had, even though they haven't been employed or they're not formally employed, they've been busy. They've been freelance writing. They've been volunteering. They've been doing this. So take this also as an opportunity as you're busy, right, to use a platform like LinkedIn to showcase some of what you're doing currently. LinkedIn is not like Instagram where people are showing us their aesthetically pleasing houses. <laughs> nothing like mine right and and all the white walls and all the perfect looking homes it's not like that and for that reason i love linkedin right on linkedin you can just purely share your work and and be proud of that and not worry about showcasing how perfect you are although some people may argue me on that but anyways this is a great time for you to start using linkedin to build a personal brand it's also a really great time to start using linkedin to network if you haven't started doing that already right and so again when i started uh building a personal brand on linkedin people just naturally began to connect with me and then there'd be times when i'd be like oh you know it'd be great to chat with abc person or somebody would reach out to me and say it'd be great to chat with you i also began to actually reach out to people that had the kind of profession i wanted to get into so at the time i know i was very interested in biotech sales and medical communication so i connected with people like that uh, medical science liaison rules i connected with people thanks to linkedin and learned a lot right learned a lot um from those from 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 those connections and that eventually did help me when um you know finally wanted to get on the path that i'm on now and i want to say that if you are going through an employment gap right now i know it's tempting to sit behind your computer or your phone and look on linkedin and indeed for jobs all day long but there's more to life I know, I know some of you are going to be like, no, G, I need a job so I can pay my bills. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know, I know, I know. But the point I'm trying to make here is this. I know that work is important. I know that making money is important. I know that the reality of bills and the reality of not having enough to pay your bills. But if you're experiencing this right now, I don't want you to spend your whole day looking for jobs. Tailor your resume, I've talked about that, but don't spend all day looking for a job. Go outside and get some fresh air. Find fun things, fun free things to do with your children. At the time when I was experiencing my employment gap, I went on long walks with my son. I enjoyed that time. It was hard, it was emotionally draining, it was exhausting to see email after email rejecting you know, my, my job applications. But use this time to explore other hobbies that you may have, other interests that you may have. And it may surprise you that those unlikely things will keep your hopes up, keep your belief up, and actually help you be successful in that new role. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, why not?